often told a lie growing up that we're leaders of tomorrow. And as I went through my 20s, I realized that the people who told me I was a leader were still leading in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, or should we say ruling. So the issues that plague Africa are still the issues that plagued Africa 20 years ago when we started. We have the highest number of unemployed youths. What that says in a couple of years is that Africa would either be the largest workforce in the world or the largest criminal force. Africa as a continent has been known as an emerging market and you can't separate the opportunities from the young people because wherever young people are then the opportunities are bound. And we can only develop if young people are empowered and equipped to have the space to express their brilliance and passion. And if you look at the innovations, the new ideas, the creativity, whether in technology, in music, in pop culture, in uh, civic engagement and civic technology, you see that the young people are the ones who are really leading the way. There are many bright spots, and when you see those bright spots in Africa, they're really linked to effective, committed and dynamic leadership. They're linked to a strong private sector and a civil society that works. And that's the vision we have. Young people are agents of change. And that's what we're pushing for. Well, when we started Leap Africa, there were no other leadership development organizations across the continent that we could look to as examples. So we had to look to organizations around the world. Our first Pioneer Board was just delighted to serve. People were energized, excited about the vision and the mission. For me, it was awesome, you know, just how young people were being impacted. There's a huge need for intergenerational dialogue. I love engaging with young people who show potential, who can dream dreams and wants to go places. So my task is to guide them and to ensure that those energies that they have are channeled in the right direction to achieve results. Our corporate governance is one that is very rich and has also allowed us to evolve over time because they kept pushing us. That has shifted our strategy over time, even where our mission remained the same. We were also very fortunate to attract some very committed funders like the Ford Foundation. They gave us a seed grant to start. It was quite responsive to our needs as an organization and some of the heads of the Ford Foundation back then also were people who truly believed in, in the vision of LEAP and they gave us a lot of support. That said, it wasn't easy because obviously we had a young team, um, we had to build a brand. Uh, so we literally went out to the streets. We used to go to schools and give out flyers for people to apply to our first leadership program. The programs that we had was a youth leadership program and then we had leadership for health, the Integrity Institute, those, those were the three programs. I still remember Ndidina and I actually trekking around Unilag, trying to actually recruit young people for the, you know, for our youth leadership program. We were always busy. <laughs> we were always on planes, we were always going from one city to the other. And the highlight of the year was always the Youth Awards, the annual Youth Awards, because we saw everything that we did during the year come to life. We saw the impact. We saw the young people, they would come from across Nigeria, from the north, from the east, and it was always like a carnival. One of the things we did during that period, or just leading to that period, was we had an institutional impact assessment done by a partner, and we found out that our core competencies, where we're getting the best results, where we could create unusual value within the social sector space was youth. And so we decided to be a youth-led, youth-focused organization. So the MasterCard Foundation project was a five-year program that we ran in five African countries, Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Ghana, and Malawi. And the essence of this program was to build the capacity of teachers. The training that uh, uh, we have received from MasterCard Comfort actually equipped, it gave us a, a lot of equipment, tools that we were able to handle the challenges that actually came our way. Yeah, there's some problems that we see and we think that we cannot do it because I'm just a teacher, but we are in a better capacity to bring the change that we want to see. It was during that time that we decided that, okay, to serve young people on the continent, the best way we would like to position is an, as an ecosystem builder, a thought leader and as an advocate. 
within the ecosystem, we wanted to build capacity. We wanted to connect um, actors because there's a lot of fragmentation within the ecosystem. It was all of those journey and all of those efforts that even led to us being positioned you know, when opportunities like the Nigerian Youth Fund came up from Ford Foundation and Makato Foundation to even better do what we wanted to do, ecosystem building. The foundation has had a good relationship with the, you know, um, they're one of our institutional grantees through our build program and, you know, we're supporting their work, not just in terms of the projects that they carry out, but also in terms of their work as an institution to provide, you know, the resources that could help to strengthen their working process as an institution and position them as leaders in the ecosystem you know, around youth and youth leadership. As young people, each pillar of the NYFF, both the national visioning, is an opportunity to participate, both in terms of applying to join the exercise, where you will be part of people right now who would brainstorm and come up with these ideas. There is also a digital part of things where those who are not able to gather, would we are going to liberalize it or digitize it where you can also lend your voice to some of these issues that would eventually form the final report of the Nigerian Youth Agenda. One of the most exciting things we've done in the last three years also is the Youth Day of Service, which is a Pan-African project where we are raising youth agency and amplifying youth agency towards solving the sustainable development goals. We want to raise leaders that will transform Africa. And so the UD of Service presented that unique opportunity to engage young people across the continent and a lot of partners across the continent. Thousands of young people executing thousands of projects in multiple countries. Last year we were in 22 countries and as of now we are presently in 29 countries. Beyond that, it was useful for us to also consolidate on thought leadership. We focused our thought leadership on other research outputs, toolkits that other people can use. So for instance, we had some of our curriculum um, translated to other African languages and being used by other partners. We have our toolkits for teachers, you know, for, for young people to develop leadership and soft skills being used by several partners on the continent. We've also positioned our e-learning to create resources that others can leverage. We were able to get a learning management system. So LEAP has a learning management system where, you know, some of the programs we now digitized and made them into accessible digital content. And these are some of the things we're going to be amplifying even significantly. You know, the resources for teacher development, for youth development, for positive youth development, to enable change agents and social entrepreneurs, and just basically empower policymakers, actors to be able to serve young people even better. In the future of Africa, where we play is really that place of a thought leader, where we say, if you want to develop the capacity of young African uh, people, your reference point will be to the LEAP Institute, where we have the evidence-based resources, where we have the courses that you need to take as a youth enabler, where we have the research that you need to reference as someone who is developing policies for young people on the continent. I think that LEAP has created that niche for itself as you know, a leader in building the capacity of youth. In the long run, people will come to appreciate that this investment that um, LEAP has been doing over the years will contribute towards you know, the emergence of that um, Africa of our dream. You know, they've really been consistent in terms of the programming, in all that it's done. And also in terms of actually investing in young people, both in the organization and also in terms of its program. For us also, big in, in terms of scaling is institutional strengthening. We look at a universe where LEAP is not exactly an implementer. Uh, on the field, but LIB becomes that premier resource center, that point of reference that a lot of organizations go to, but also a lot of organizations look to when it comes to strengthening their institutional capacity to deliver lasting change. And that's where we're going with all of these programs and more. And as we go on, we have special projects that we continue to work on. There's a lot of work to be done. We can't do it alone. We want more support. Because we are designing an institute and OASIS, a world-class um, place where researchers and youth agents can come to, that is not something you can do on by yourself. And right now, we, we need that support. We need organizations to work with us. We can really look forward to our courses, our research fellowship. And of course, we are building a physical institute, a physical building in Lagos where we are going to be housing our research fellows on a short-term basis who are going to be coming in and sleeping on a residential campus in Lagos. And we are building a robust resource of a digital presence, all-encompassing, of everything that we are set out to do. 
at the institute which includes a resource hub where you can find research papers, you can find books, you can find reference material, set of courses that would be delivered via you know e-learning platform and you know a couple of core based courses to look out for as well. And so I look at the next five years of Leap Africa as an organization that has truly influenced positively the ecosystem of youth development and youth leadership and become true advocates at the highest possible level. Before SIP, you know, I just wanted to do something. I was not going to an organization. It was more like a project, a birthday project. So joining the SIP was a transformation. So I got trained, you know, I got equipped. I understood what I really wanted to do beyond passion. It's, it's difficult for me to talk about my life and not talk about LEAP. It, it just gave me a platform that has set me on the right career path. In 2015, I was in Lagos, didn't have a job, you know, didn't know my left to right. I searched for Leap Africa on Google and saw so they were doing a program called School to Work. I applied for the program. Fortunately, I got in. The program, the program was a two-week um, training to prepare young people for the world of work, right? I was out of school. These are essential things you need to learn because you, understand, you agree with me that there's a gap between what we learn in school and the realities of the workplace. So Leap Africa built that program to fill that gap. You can't encounter the ID program and remain the same. The ID fellowship program gave me a CV. Before then, I didn't have a CV. It was during the training that I got a CV. At first, I did not look at myself as a leader. But coming into ILIT, I discovered that I am a leader wherever I am. And this ILIT gave me another confidence, not only within the school environment, even in the church where I serve. It was during the training I know what they call vision board. And so today I have my vision board. And then currently I'm a member of um, Leap Africa's alumni network. If you've gone through any of the Leap Africa programs, you're an alumni. So it's a very large network. I love the youth leadership program. We used to be an old program, we ran it for years, but we stopped running it. Then we decided to launch it as a digital program to reach out to young people in, in universities or in higher institutions, all the forms of higher institutions, to help them develop leadership capacity develop as active citizens and develop their knowledge of sustainability so they can help localize and help um, actualize the SDGs. Uh, you know, as I then, I didn't have money, so it was 10,000 Naira and it was even highly discounted. So to go look for 5,000 Naira first because we we're allowed to pay twice. You know, some people feel it can't be learned, but for me, I, I, I always say I'm a product of learning the system and the structures of leadership. I have to maintain the highest form of integrity. For me, it was a whole lot of learning for me and it kind of changed my life. It really helped us a lot because uh, between the time we went in for the program and after the program, post the program, we've seen results of those innovative workshops we had at the um, Leap Africa program. So it was during the program, the SIP training program, when we were trained on leveraging technology. I said, okay, I can actually leverage technology to get people to give me funds to lend to these women. Currently, we have two apps on Play Store. We've been able to leverage technology in everything we do. In 2020, we um, carried out certain projects at different prisons, particularly in Oko Prison Benin and Kefi Prison in Nasarawa, and we actually got funds from Leap Africa to carry out that project. We were able to provide relief materials to um, over 3,000 inmates and um, officers of the prison. I was selected as 2019 UN SDG Action Award. Just last year, I was, I was also among the 12 uh, young leaders from across the world were selected as Obama Foundation Scholar. The impact in just three years, you know, has been very, very monumental, all, all thanks to my participation with the SIP program. Otherwise, I would have, the, all of this achievement and, and dreams would have been shattered, would have been killed, I mean, it would have been buried if I had not received the inspiration. The number of stomachs that we are fed, the number of children that would have never been to school, that we sent to school. The people that we've actually given their lives meaning makes us a success. Lots of those who've been inspired by LEAP have either set up some organization or some projects leading change in different organizations where they find themselves. If we're able to replicate that and multiply that across Nigeria, then Paraventure will stand a chance as a nation to truly get back on our right trajectory. And we have so many success stories across the continent. When I think of people like Toyo Siakerele, who was recognized as a young leader 
by Leap very early in her tenure. Now has built a rise and, you know, Otto or Random, who just celebrated 10 years with Slum to Schools. Uh, we have so many of those young people across Nigeria, across Africa, who can trace their stories to LEAP. And that really was our vision, to create an army of change agents across the continent who will uplift this continent so we can stand shoulder to shoulder with other continents around the world. And I'm proud to say that we have played a pivotal role in that transition. If you look at the theme for this year's International Youth Day, intergenerational relationship, and you know, trying to deal with these biases that not just old people, but young people, you know, disproportionately do face. How do we target these biases without investing in the youth? Education, health, that technological development, those are the investment that we need to do. And every one of us can do that, not necessarily because you have 10 million dollars or 5,000 naira, you know. Any of those resources can make the difference. An investment in a leader is very catalytic. You can't even trace how far that would go because of the impact that individual can. You know, so in Leap Africa, we talk about the power of one and the strength of many. So we're raising those one individual, but the many also that can lead transformation. And so joining this vehicle is probably one of the most fulfilling, most catalytic thing you could do with your life and your resources. We are calling upon impact investors and legacy donors you can use this opportunity to be a part. You can sponsor just a room in the institute. Your name can be on the door of our innovation and research lab. It can be on our auditorium. You can join us to sponsor a program, or sponsor a course, volunteering to be a faculty member, coming on to take one of our courses, or joining our fellowship program. I believe so much in this vision. I believe so much in the organization. It will and it should play that catalytic role to help us deliver the Africa of our dreams. If we don't get the development of our youth rights, it will be quite a disaster for Africa. And so therefore I would encourage uh, at different levels, people who have the, who have the capacity to be funders to support the Africa. I'd also encourage other people in the corporate sector who also have the capacity to come into LIP and similar organizations to give support in terms of learning the experience, their skills to help the organization do its work better. They should also volunteer. You know, this is our continent. We have no other continent. And we must, we must transform this continent into what our, we dream about, which is a future where every young person has access to achieve their highest potential, lives in a safe and peaceful environment, and achieves their dreams right here in Africa. You don't have to leave the continent to achieve your dreams. You can create the future you want on this continent. Mother Teresa used to say that um, I can do things you cannot, you can do things I cannot, and together we can do great things. And that's been the story of Leap Africa, a lot of partners. I want to appreciate the board members, the past, the present, and the future. Super amazing people, super committed, always giving of themselves, their time, their wisdom, their treasures, their tools to advance this. Many of them have to strike themselves across several other boards and their own businesses to volunteer, to support Leap. I want to thank them all the encouragements and ever willing and ever available to step forward and make a difference. To the board, I say thank you. Thank you for believing in this vision. Thank you for being custodians of this vision and thank you for enabling this vision to fly. You have been amazing. I appreciate your sacrifices. I appreciate your talent and treasure that you brought to Leap Africa. Thank you for joining me in this vision. Thank you for taking this vision to the next level. My profound Gratitude to our partners and our funders. Number one is Ford from almost day one, you know, till now and to the future. Ford Foundation, thank you so much for all your hard work and your support. Without them, we would only have ideas and no execution. They make those uh, pro programs come to life and I thank them for the sacrifices that they make to support us and we really appreciate them. MasterCard Foundation, 
Mercato Foundation, um, City Foundation, Union Bank in Nigeria. Union Bank has um, sponsored the SIPA program. The International Youth Foundation, who helped us also launch SIPA 10 years ago, an army of private sector partners who have supported our work, you know, even more recently, helping to take some initiatives forward. Sahara Foundation, Dow Africa, Equity Group Foundation, Camfed, um, Ghana, Camfed um, Malawi, um, BRAC in Ethiopia, you know, just an army of partners. I'm grateful for the team. I mean, the lift team, they have energy, they are vibrant, they're exciting people. A big shout out to all of you. I hope that wherever you are, I know you are excelling, right? Uh, so keep excelling and stay blessed. Happy anniversary, Leap. It's been really amazing being a part of this wonderful organization. So a big shout out to Leap Africa, 20 years of great work and i'm so honored you know to serve and, and and be part of lips journey at this 20th year i want to say a very big bigger and the biggest congratulations to lip africa and i pray that god almighty will give the resources needed the idea needed the wisdom needed for us to go beyond where we have gone for the past 20 years this has been what i've been waiting for in my 20 years teaching career because I'm a changed being, I'm, I'm going to be an instrument to change the whole world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy 20th anniversary, Leap Africa. Many more years to come, and I wish you good in all your endeavors. Happy anniversary, 20th anniversary, Leap Africa. I'm so happy for all the knowledge you have brought out through me, and so many other people like me. I, I wish that God give you long, long years of good joy, long years of good, of good success. Congratulations, Leap Africa, on turning 20. Thank you for being a pillar of strength and support to young Nigerians who are trying to change the world. This is 20. We will be here in the next 20 years to celebrate Leap Africa 40, bigger and better. Happy 20th anniversary, Leap Africa. Happy 20th anniversary to Leap Africa. Leap is part of my story. Thank you, Leap Africa, for everything you're doing in our lives and the lives of many. Cheers to another 20 and beyond. From all of us at uh, Youth and AIDS Initiative Africa, from all of us at Intact Solutions, we say happy 20th anniversary, Leap Africa. Happy 20th anniversary for impactful work you're doing for us, the youths in Nigeria and across Africa. Happy 20th anniversary, Leap. I wish Leap in its 20th year, more glorious years to come. And God sparing all of us that will celebrate Leap at 30 and miraculously leap at 40 for some of us too, who knows? <laughs> ah!